Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mark Pensestadler. This video is going to be an update on my Zenith Cruiser fuselage. Here's a quick little look at it. You can see it's looking fantastic. It's out of the paint booth. The painting is obviously done. It's on the landing gear. The interior is installed. The horizontal stabilizer is installed. The decals are on the side. And I think it looks pretty cool. It's at the point now where I can start working on a lot of the other little details. So I did not film the painting process of the fuselage because the process is exactly the same as me painting any of the other parts I painted. So if you want to see that, you can watch some of my other videos. I did want to mention one thing about painting the fuselage though. Since I have my engine installed, I had to paint it basically upright, which means to paint the bottom of the airplane, I had to lay on my back on the bottom of the paint booth and paint upwards. Now that's a little bit of a challenge because a normal paint gun will not spray like that. They have a system, or the Vilbus has a system called Duck Cups or D Cups or something like that. I'll put a link below. But it's a system that's made for painting upside down. So before we get started with the rest of the video, let me show you. All right, for a normal paint gun, you have a cup like this, you fill it with paint and there's a little hole for a vent on the top up here. When you spray the paint, paint goes down by gravity and out the paint gun and air can get into top to replace the paint. It's vented just like a fuel tank would be. Now to paint upside down, gravity is going to keep the paint down here. It's not going to get pushed up here and it's going to come out your little hole on the bottom. So there's a different way, there's a different cup that's made for painting upside down. That's called the, the D cups or D cups or whatever they're called, I don't know. But anyway, this is what it is right here. It's a little bit different. You can see this thing here, it's not really a cup. You can see right through it. There's a different base. And the way this works is you have this little flimsy thing right here. You fill this with paint. You put it in here like that. Then they have this little cap that goes on here. You push that on. And then you put it in here. And now this is your cup that goes on top of the paint gun like that. Now the way this works is you can paint upside down. Here, let me put this on the, the gun so you can see what I'm talking about. You can paint upside down like this and what it does is when the air is flowing through here it sucks the paint up and since there is no vent what it does is as the paint flows out instead of replacing the volume in the, the cup here with air it just sucks this thing in you can see it just kind of collapses it like that. Uh, and then once it's empty, you can refill it and, and paint again. So this is what I use to paint the bottom of the airplane. So the first step to getting the fuselage painted, or the, at least the bottom, is to remove the landing gear. So I had a couple people lift up the fuselage. I removed the landing gear and I built this wooden stand that, as you can see, the fuselage just sits on the top of it. And what that does is it opens up the whole bottom so that I have access to that gear channel and I can prime it and paint it without the landing gear being in the way or that other original stand that I built that lifts the fuselage up. In order to get the fuselage out of the paint booth I have to put the landing gear on. Well before I put the gear on or the axles back on the gear I needed to get these wheel pant mounting brackets installed. So I clamped them to the each side of the landing gear with just one of these clamps and I just used a drill bit, just not to drill the hole, but just to mark the location of the hole. Then I took it out in a drill press and drilled a pilot hole, and then I drilled through with the proper size drill bit. It's either a quarter inch or maybe five sixteenths, I don't remember. But anyway, I got the first hole drilled, and then once I got the first hole drilled, I took it back to the gear, put a bolt in, clamped it back in place again, and... Uh, I did the same process again. Put the drill bit through here, just enough to mark the bracket to get a little starter hole in there. Then I took it back off, took it back to the drill press, drilled the hole, put another bolt in, clamped it in place, and did the exact same thing again for all four holes. This is what it looks like installed on the landing gear. It's primed with a epoxy primer. So it's on there and ready for the wheel pants. 
Now since I shined up my landing gear and polished it, I also wanted to polish these brackets that hold the landing gear on. So I did the whole same process again. I sanded it down with 220, 400, 600, uh, and then I used the same polishing compound that I used on the gear to shine them up. They're not perfect, but they're, they're fairly shiny and look good. They match the gear. This is that same polishing compound I used on the gear. Instead of using my buffer, I just did it all by hand. Took a little while, a little bit of elbow grease, but they came out pretty nice. All right, now the final step in getting the gear ready is taking these big gear nuts and you can see they're gold. They're cadmium plated. And I want mine nice and shiny to match the landing gear. So I learned a long time ago that flits will actually take off that cadmium plating on here and make them nice and shiny. It takes a lot of elbow grease and it takes a while to do. I've already done two of the nuts. I have two more left to do. Uh, I'm also doing the washers too so that the washers are nice and shiny. And I know what you guys are thinking, oh, you're taking off the corrosion protection of those nuts and washers. And yeah, that's true. But if you guys have ever polished anything in your life, you know that it does not last and it has to be constantly buffed and polished. So I'm not worried about the corrosion protection on these nuts because, you know, a few times a year or maybe even more than that, I will, uh, you know, I got to rebuff the landing gear and keep it all nice and shiny. And that's kind of one of those things you do when you're you're done flying for the evening and you just want to enjoy being with the airplane and being in the hangar and tinkering around as I call it. You know, you just get some, some polish out and you polish things up. So my point is that corrosion will never have a, the time to um, build up or affect these nuts. So I'm going to make them nice and shiny and it's going to look really nice. Well, here's what they look like polished up. They're not perfect, but I like them better. They look chromed. They look like they more match the aluminum bracket. Here's what they look like installed on the airplane. There are two holes that need drilled in the end of each axle for another wheel pant mounting bracket. And that's what I'm doing here. I double checked the location of those holes, drilled the holes in the gear or the axle, and then tapped them. Once that was done, put the axles back on the plane. Well, with the gear on the airplane, it's time to remove it from the paint booth. So I opened up the hangar door, pulled the airplane out, and it was kind of tricky because my ramp was basically a big sheet of ice. So I was sliding all over the place trying to push the airplane back in. But it's out of the paint booth. It's back on the other side of the hangar. And that now frees up my paint booth for the wings and some of the other smaller parts that I have to paint. So things are starting to come along nicely now. Now before I put the decals on the side of the airplane, I did sand and polish and buff the paint. And again, I already made a video on, on how to do this, but I did the same process again with the 1200, 1500, 2000, and then 3000 and 5000 grit papers, and the three different polishing compounds from 3M. Guys, if you need some decals or end numbers or anything made for your airplane, contact me through aircraftstickers.com. I made these myself. This is the right side of the airplane, and now I'll show you how I did it on the left side. There's different ways you can apply this. I like putting them on wet because you get less air bubbles underneath the vinyl. So I spray the fuselage with the solution of soapy water. And I'm also, you'll see here when I peel off the vinyl, I spray that with water also. The idea is you don't want them to stick together just yet. You want to be able to put it on and move it around just a little bit. So get it as wet as you can with soapy water and then it's all up to you to line it up. Now the way I'm aligning this up and the way I cut out these decals is if you look on the, the Blue Angels C-130, 
you can see that the, the stars and bars go from the top of the blue stripe to the bottom of the yellow stripe. So once I had my fuselage painted, I just resized the, the um, vinyl to that size so it fit perfectly on the airplane. And it's just a matter of, of positioning it and getting it lined up right. And once you get it perfect, you can start putting it on and working out the water and the air. And I use a felt squeegee. Again, I'll have a link to Amazon below. You definitely, just, you definitely want to use a felt one because if you just use a squeegee or a credit card or something like that, you're really going to scratch up your vinyl. But try to push all the water and air out in one direction. That's the best way to do it without getting air bubbles trapped between the airplane or your surface and the vinyl. As you can imagine, you're going to have a little bit of a mess where the, where the rivets are. You can see here, there's, it doesn't want to lay down over the rivets, but this is how you fix that. So there's water and air trapped in there right now. So you want to poke a, just a few little holes in it to give that water and air a place to go. And you want to always push towards the rivet and just push that water and air out. And once you get it all out, it'll, you, are, you can see here, it already looks a lot better, but it's still not perfect. You really need to heat up that vinyl and shrink it to fit around the rivet. And you have to be really careful because there's a fine line between melting the vinyl and shrinking it. But if you practice a little bit, you'll get a good technique down and you can work it around all the rivets very nicely. And there's also, you'll see there are other little air bubbles here and there. If you poke those with a razor and just push the air and water out of them, they'll all come out. It takes a little bit of work, but eventually you'll get it. The white pieces, well, all the rest of the pieces are just put on by, by eye. I'm pretty good at doing stuff like this. I don't know, you could send, tape off some guidelines or something like that if you need to, but I can put it on by eye, just looking for an equal distance all around it. And it's really the same process again. You push all the water out, try to do it in one direction. And again, anywhere there's rivets, you'll have to poke a little bit of holes and heat it up and melt the vinyl a little bit to get it to go around the rivets. But if you take your time and learn the technique, you'll get it looking really nice. You can see I already have them all done on the blue part in the middle of the logo. And you can see how nice it looks. Well, the same thing goes for the star. Wet it so it doesn't stick. Position it. And it took me a couple tries to get it to get it perfect. But once you get it on, it's really it's the exact same thing again as everything else. You're taking taking your felt squeegee and pushing the water out in one direction. And then again, I'll have to you'll see on here I'll go over all the rivets again and uh, push out all the water and air. You can see how many times I've had to reposition this, but eventually I got it right where I wanted it. And this is where I'm just working out all the air and water. And again, look how it looks over the rivets. It looks terrible, right? You just have to go over each one, take your time and use the heat gun a little bit. And in just a minute here, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Same process for the red stripes. Again, I just did it by hand or by eye. 
put them on, work out the bubbles, same as everything else. Well, that is the entire process of putting these decals on. I think it looks really nice. I'm real happy with it, and it almost looks like it's just painted onto the side of the fuselage. All right, guys, thank you for watching. That's enough for this video. There's lots more coming, so smash that subscribe button, like the video if you want. And the next couple videos, I guess, will be on installing the elevator, the vertical stabilizer, the wheel pants, the brake lines, the doors, the top window and front windshield. And eventually here, I'll get the wings into the paint booth. And I cannot wait to get the wings on because the flaps and ailerons are painted, ready to go. The wing struts are painted, ready to go. I just need to get these wings painted. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next one.